Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today is Tuesday, December 4th, 2012, and I'm going to start here with um, Syria, and I'm going to cover the Middle East in this news report today. Um, all the headlines and links will be in YouTube's video description. And so the first one I have is Assad may use chemical weapons against militants, Obama surmises. Also, uh, Syria and Assad are being threatened by uh, Hillary Clinton as well, so uh, putting on the pressure on Syria. So does it mean that uh, they're a big danger? No, it just means that, uh, like I said, um, they're following a playbook, uh, the globalists, to basically get a regime change going. So now they're using the chemical weapons linked to possibly Hezbollah or getting in the hands of Al-Qaeda and terrorists, the same people that they're funding, and carrying out all kinds of atrocities um, that we'll get into later. On Monday, Obama, whose country is accused of being a key member of an international coalition attempting to destabilize Syria, warned the Syrian president not to use chemical weapons against the uh, terrorist, says there would be consequences if Assad were to use these weapons, and Obama warned, adding that the world is watching you. Uh, quote, the use of chemical weapons is and would be totally unacceptable. If you make the tragic mistake of using these weapons, there will be consequences and you will be held accountable. So, But it doesn't really, like I said, it doesn't really matter whether they use them or they move them to get them out of the hands of the terrorists. They'll be considered an act of um, hostility. So um, the U.S. repeats Syrian chemical weapons warnings. U.S. repeats the same tired, desperate accusations that the Syrian army is preparing to use chemical weapons. And it uh, goes on here in its citing intelligence reports that the Damascus government is preparing such munitions for possible use, yet no evidence was provided, nor any reasonable explanation as to why the Syrian government would deploy such weapons when, after over two years, the majority of the Syrian people still stand behind the government while the terrorist forces are flooding over Syria's borders, have been faced with constant tactical and strategic defeat. And the uh, mainstream media is also... Uh, it says here, preparing to preempt the inevitability that Libya's chemical arsenal has also found its way into uh, Syria as well. Of course, you know, we all know that Libya is a result of NATO intervention. So I guess the one thing that we can, uh, we can look forward to or predict in our little crystal ball here, uh, just based on history, right, and uh, a pattern, is that once they take Assad out, and they get the regime change and they create instability and the terrorists uh, make it so bad there that nobody wants to live or do commerce there um, that eventually these chemical weapons will then be funneled out of Syria and into the next country that they want to take over say Iran or, or, or Jordan or um, Lebanon or Yemen somehow these chemical weapons from Syria will now all of a sudden find their way into that country along with Al Qaeda their own little uh, proxy terrorist task force for regime changes. The accusations were printed in the Washington Post article Obama warned Syria amid rising concerns over their chemical weapons, but despite the insinuations, including the disclaimer emphasis added, Syria is thought to have several hundred surface-to-air ballistic missiles capable of carrying chemical warheads, other nations thought to have weapons of WMDs included Iraq, which in hindsight after the 10-year war and occupation following years of these sanctions leaving millions dead, turned out not to, in fact, have such weapons. Here's the kicker, though. Conversely, NATO's proxy forces, as I was talking about, operating in Syria, possess both the means and motivation to carry out chemical attacks, therefore blaming Syria's government and granting the West the impetus needed to intervene more directly. It says Libya's arsenal has fallen into the hands of sectarian extremists with NATO assistance last year in the culmination of efforts to overthrow North African nation of Libya. Since then, the Libyan uh, terrorists or militants, led by commanders of Al-Qaeda's Libyan Islamic Fighting Group, have armed sectarian extremists across the Arab world as far west as Mali and to as far east as Syria. So the NATO-backed terrorists do have the means. In addition, this is what I was going to cover, but it's included in this article, to small arms, heavier weapons are also making their way through the extensive network. That network is uh, is uh, pretty long, like I said, and vast and, and, and pretty set. They call it, you know, that's the rat lines that, the, that these uh, mercenaries and terrorists uh, go from country to country and restock, resupply, recruit and train, Syria says, would not use chemical weapons against its people, so they really don't have any motivation to do this. Uh, Syria would not use chemical weapons if they had them. It said, in response to the statements of the American Secretary of State, Clinton, who warned Syria against using these such weapons, Syria has stressed repeatedly that it will not use these types of weapons if they were available under any circumstances against its people.
All right, so that kind of sets the backdrop for the rest of this uh, video. Most Britons reject Syria intervention. This is from December 4th, 2012. A new survey has revealed that 7 out of 10 people in the UK uh, do not approve of an intervention in Syria after Britain's highest-ranking military officer suggested an attack on the Middle Eastern country. But they're not the only country, just like Libya. Most people in America and in Europe did not want to intervene and, uh, and get a regime change there in uh, Libya with Gaddafi, but they did it anyways. NATO and the UK and the US and France. Public opinion survey, Syrians reject violence and outside intervention. So says here, a major blow to foreign intervention in Syria from November 4th, 2012. Just published results from the independent public opinion survey indicating that the Syrian people overwhelmingly reject the Turkish government's policies towards their country. 65% surveyed regard the Turkish government as very unfriendly or hostile with only 60% characterizing it as friendly. This is the Turkish, uh, this is the Syrian people, you know, and uh, all the people that want the regime change are mostly terrorists. See, that's, that, that's the problem. This is what I'm going to prove in these reports today, is that uh, wherever these Al-Qaeda, wherever there's uh, uh, semi-grassroots, and I, and I stress semi-grassroots uh, protests, like uh, during the Arab Spring, most of them were engineered, uh, and most of them were the results of high prices that, like I said, the globalists, when they want to get crisis, they just turn the dials and they can do that with their rigged economy. But um, the thing is, is wherever there's peaceful protests, there, there will all of a sudden be these extremists that will infiltrate and overtake it and co-opt it like they will probably in Egypt and like they did in Egypt. And uh, that's that's the problem, and that's how you know that uh, that the whole crisis was being engineered to begin with. So it's a, I mean it's an actual uh, a process or a, a system, a formula. You know, you say, oh, there's humanitarian issues going up, people are dying, we need to stop the violence. Then they uh, and this is after they've already provoked and engineered these uh, these uh, uh, uprisings and stuff like that through the media and lies and whatever. And then they say, well, you know, something must be done. And so then all of a sudden, all these terrorists start coming in there and killing all these innocent people. And it gets worse, and the violence never stops. So they keep doing it, and they keep funding these terrorists to kill people, and, and at the same time saying the violence must stop until they get what they want, which is um, uh, basically intervening in their politics and, and changing their, their leadership. And they're very slick with it, too, because, like I said, this is all done by private think tanks, and a very intelligent people that have a lot of money and uh, have a, a lot of ties to energy companies. And so they'll go in there and they'll just set up their own government, the free and their own armies. Ooh, the Free Syrian Army. Ooh, the transition, uh, trans, transitional uh, council in Libya, you know. Before they're even out, before they even ousted the government, they'll just start setting up governments. Uh, Syria's internet out outage and future of information warfare from December 1st says it's not serious government that didn't prepare for war. They perhaps simply prepared for the wrong kind of war. They're talking about the uh, outages and serious communication networks. And Western media re uh, immediately accused the Syrian government of being behind the move. However, it should be noted that NATO-backed terrorists operating inside Syria have been openly given advanced communication equipment by Western nations, including the U.S., allowing militants to create their own independent communication networks. It includes radio, satellites, cell networks, as well as underreported existence of suitcase internets. It's pretty interesting. Which is why the New York Times was reporting on the same date, December 1st, with internet down in Syria, rebels use Skype over satellite links. They did this in Libya, they did it in Egypt, and other places as well, Yemen. Um, it says here, in a demonstration of their growing sophistication organization, yeah, <laughs> with a lot of help with the CIA, from the CIA, what is it, MI6 and them, a Syrian rebels responded to a nationwide shutdown of the internet by turning to satellite technology to coordinate within a country and communicate with outside activists. So that's what they call them. Act I love that, isn't it? Outside activists. Well, some people, most people would just consider them terrorists and foreign mercenaries and foreigners, but we call them peaceful activists. And they're in touch with social media and using technology. The reason a communications blackout in Syria would not affect NATO's uh, primary proxy terrorist forces is because any node or bottleneck in Syria controlled by the government has already long since been circumvented, either through independent networks or satellite links. So, keep moving. You can go in there and check it out. Links will be posted. Uh, Land of Shore, they always have great articles. Uh, it basically breaks down this little suitcase, stealth internet, known as internet in a suitcase, could allow dissidents, see again, dissidents, 
uh, to communicate in countries where the state control network is heavily censored or shut down. So, moving on, we have uh, next Syrian violence touches Turkey and Lebanon. Of course, this is how the mainstream media and Western media presents it, right? Syrian violence touches Lebanon. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means that the terrorists that the Western powers, including uh, Qatar, or Qatar, Saudi Arabia, UK, France, US, are all what? They're investing in these foreign terrorists and mercenaries to wreak havoc. Now, uh, it's kind of unfortunate for Turkey and Lebanon, uh, but Turkey plays into it. And um, that's why they're going to be setting up these uh, Patriot missiles that were just given to them for Christmas. A nice little Chris, pre early Christmas present to Turkey. You get Patriot missiles to defend yourselves as you're arming against the terrorists as you're arming the terrorists at the same time. And then bitch about violence spilling over your border. Well, the problem is, is that like like I said before, they're rats, and they sit there and they shoot up uh, women and children and people in church and they blow up their churches, and then they run over the borders to Turkey and Jordan and Lebanon, and then they create uh, uh, instability over there as well and start shooting people there. And when people get pissed off, then they run around the other way. Case in point, Syrian warplanes on Monday bombed a security building that had been taken over by rebels along the Turkish border, killing at least one person. So they were trying to retake their own, their own building, the Syrian government. See, it spilled over into Lebanon, too, as they put it after Lebanese troops, government troops, exchanged fire with the uh, rebels or terrorists across the border late Sunday. See, it's, the insanity, guys, is that for people, I know most of you are aware of this, but just to break it down in these news articles that are pure propaganda, probably written straight from intelligence agencies and think tanks, they use these certain words and they just ram it home, you know? That's the thing, you just keep repeating it, you keep repeating it, and you keep repeating it until people just think, you know? Like even if I find myself, you, uh, I'll just read it, just for simplicity, right? Oh, the 20-month-year-old uprising, well, it was in a foreign invasion by foreigners, Murderers and killers, <laughs> not peaceful activists. Saudis hold weapons back from Syrian rebels. U.S. discourages discourages such support. So usually when they say that, that means that they're actually doing the opposite. So this is from October of 2012. Um, Saudi Arabia and Qatar, who have mostly been funneling uh, money and small arms to Syrian rebels, have refused to provide heavier weapons like shoulder fire we uh, missiles. Well, that was the CIA that ended up saying they were going to start funneling the Syrian uh, um, these. Uh, shoulder-fired missiles to these rebel terrorists. So remember when I covered that a few months back. Syrian rebels' arsenal now includes heavy weapons. So when is this? This is from December, sorry, November 29th, 2012. It says that rebels who have laid siege to a Syrian army base near uh, Mayadin, in other words, terrorists who attacked a, a sovereign country's government army base in southeastern Syria, have made mortar attacks a regular part of the routine. That's right, remember? When those Turkish citizens got killed, uh, it was actually the same uh, people that Turkey was actually uh, um, on the back of pickup trucks just like this, arming them, giving them shells. Uh, these mortars fired over the border, and that's what uh, prompted Turkey to say, well, we can, we're going to uh, pass a bill now that we can go inside Syria and start uh, carrying out military operations, push for a no-fly zone. I love how they do this. This is McClatchy. They make it sound so great and inspiring by these peaceful activists. Machine shops operated by the terrorist sympathizers now are turning out dozens of rockets to the terrorists used to pummel the Syrian government from a distance because they're cowards, like I said. Militarization of Syrian conflict in full swing, says Deputy Foreign Minister. Large supplies of weapons to the Syrian opposition continue despite an arms embargo against the war-torn country says these supplies include rather dangerous arms such as stinger missiles the diplomat said in an interview says the militarization of the conflict triggers extreme concerns in moscow it hampers efforts which should be aimed at concil uh, conciliation and work with all opposition groups say in order to make conflicting sides reach an immediate and comprehensive ceasefire but like i said they don't want to cease fire so syrian government has tried to hold ceasefires and peace negotiations but the terrorists don't want it because that's not part of the plan by the western uh, Brookings Institute policy for the, uh, regime change. It says basically they're going to put the pressure on Assad and their government until eventually it just caves. NATO is set to send missiles to Turkey's border. Go in there and read or uh, watch this video from this turd bag as he goes and talks about how they're going to start arming Turkey because, well, they're on the defense. They're being attacked from the spillover from Syria's civil war. See, it's a civil war now, too, guys. Not an invasion. It says here that uh, Rasmussen hopes that the Patriot missiles might prevent chemical weapons from being used. This is GGN, and I'm Darko. Thank you.